Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Christian Lanier, and this past summer, I worked under the guidance of Dr. Hans So at UT Southwest's Neuro Repair Lab on a project entitled Histological Analysis of Neuronal Injury and Inflammation Following Subarachnoid Injury in Rats. Before I get to the specifics of my research, I'd like to present you all a little background information. My project relates most closely to the incidence of stroke, which in most cities has a very high rate of fatality rate of up to 50%. It's the second highest killer in the world uh, up to 2012, following only cardiovascular injury. And there are two ways to induce stroke. The first being ischemia, where a blood clot can block a blood supply to the brain. And the second being hemorrhaging, where a rupture of blood flow in the blood brain barrier also disrupts blood supply. The lab we worked with focused primarily on the second. Treatment, an MRI image was taken, and on day three, another image was taken where the animals were sacrificed, their brains excised, and then shipped to us in Texas. To prepare for use of the microtome, we had to switch the medium from sodium azide to a 15% sucrose solution for two days before switching to another 30% sucrose solution for two days, or to the brain sunk to the bottom in order to properly dehydrate them. At that point, they were ready to slice. Once we wanted to slice them, we had to cut off the cerebellum so they could lie flat on the platform. And here, orientation was very important. We had to make sure the ventral surface was facing the user, the dorsal first uh, surface outwards, with the rostral surface up and the caudal surface down. Rostral being towards the nose, caudal towards the tail, ventral the stomach, and dorsal the back of the red. <coughs> then we had to make sure we registered the left inch lateral side of each brain to keep it consistent. We did this with a 23 gauge needle and slightly perforated the brain into a small point to avoid damaging it. We also had to chill the platform with dry ice and then use uh, PDS to provide a frozen uh, adhesive for the brains. From there, we used the MRI imaging we had before as well as a rat brain atlas to find where we wanted to start looking at the brains and the rats. And we used 50 micron sections to reach the point we wanted to look at before actually collecting 30 micron sections and placing them in 12 hole media, or sorry, 12 hole plate with proper technique media. This lasted for about 17 to 19 seconds for each braid, giving us about three slides of the braid. From there, we were ready to stain them. The first thing we used was HE or hematoxin ESN, and for this, we wanted to look at inflammation. For we had to, to do this, we had to stir dive for several seconds before using paraphernalia to fix them, rinsing them in tap water, uh, staining them in hematoxin for two to three minutes, another rinse, and then ammonia hydroxide, before rinsing them again, exposing them to ESN, and then several different concentrations of ethanol and xylene to dry them out before we fix them with the cover slip and more xylene. The next thing we used was crustal violet, which would be used to outline the lie versus dead cells. We had to prepare the stock regions because we didn't have these in the lab prior to this experiment. But once those were ready, we could stand the slides for about 15 minutes, rinse them again, and again increase the uh, concentration of ethanol to dry them out. Before xylene was used, and then perma and cover slip to fix them. And once we had actually finished these things, we imaged them on two different machines, the Zeiss Axio and the Hong Kong Nanozoomer, which gives us the images we used for our results. These are images of two subjects we had, ER25 and ER66, from our experiment. Uh, ER25 is rostral to the MRI images we have of it, and ER66 is caudal. Unfortunately, we didn't exactly see what we wanted to hear with inflammation, but we could identify areas where SH bleed happened, similar to where uh, edema was later identified in MRI images. You can see there's uh, extensive tissue damage in these areas, where it's darker and more torn. Also on the left side, you can see where we registered uh, the brains. Crustal bite was also a little uh, disappointing because we had to do extensive troubleshooting to get something similar to what we've seen in mouse models beforehand. But uh, the bottom line is we can still identify the difference between live cells and dead cells. Live cells just look like they're more in the background and light and spread out, while dead cells are more punctate, older, and um, darker. Again, this is ER25 and ER66. These are the EM, uh, MRI images taken earlier from our previous lab. Notice in the top, of, uh, top right quadrant of ER25, contralateral where surgery took place, you can see lighter areas where swelling occurred. And this translated to tissue damage when the, the actual microtome was used for areas of weakness and the bleed we saw before. And the other things we'd like to have used but didn't get around to using were less all fast blue, the same for axons, and alkaline phosphatase, the same for blood vessels. We had attempted to use these same before, but the only protocols we used were for mouse models, and they didn't translate well to our bigger rat brain sections. This brings me to my discussion. So although we didn't exactly find what we expected as far as inflammation and uh, losing quantification using crustal violet, 
We were able to find areas of SH bleed similar to lesions, and if we can find a good idea of what uh, dead cell density is related to lesions, we could possibly draw a correlation between the two. For future research, we'd like to troubleshoot uh, the other stains and incorporate them into our profile, as well as using further imaging with the nanozoomer and axial. We then like to uh, find the link between spreading utilization and inflammation in immune response in the bigger picture. For my acknowledgments, I'd like to acknowledge the rest of the network our lab for assisting me with new techniques throughout my uh, stint there, as well as the UMC Retract Lab for entrusting me with their subjects, as well as the network, of course. <laughs>